Number Concepts for Middle School. I'm Amy Erickson, your studio instructor. Today, we'll be using proportions for problem solving. I need studio students to help me do this, and we've recruited two to help us today. So why don't we let the students introduce themselves? Tracy, go ahead. Hi, my name is Tracy Hayes, and I go to Perry Middle School, and I would like to say hi to my mom, dad, and my little sister. Nice job, Tracy. Becca? My name is Rebecca Granger, and I go to Royal Oak Intermediate School. I'd like to say hi to my teachers and all my classmates. Excellent job, and thanks for coming, girls. So we're going to get started today with proportions. We'll be using proportions to solve problems. Remember, a proportion is an equation that sets two ratios equal. Remember, we've been using ratios in the last couple of shows, huh? Yes. Okay, well, we'll be using them again. <laughs> and we can use ratios with proportions in order to compare figures, like polygons. If we wanted to tell if two polygons were similar, we could do that with a proportion. You remember what it means if two polygons are similar? Why don't you tell your partner? What does it mean if shapes are similar? So why don't you guys tell each other what you think? Shapes are similar when they're the same shape, but they are different sizes. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, you know what? I have two similar shapes on the overhead. You, let's take a look. So here are two similar shapes, and just like you said, Tracy, they are the same shape but different sizes, right? Yes. Hey, what are these shapes, you guys? Trapezoids. Good job. Okay. Now, actually, mathematically, in order to be similar, all of the corresponding angles, that means this one corresponds to this one, this one corresponds to this one, this one corresponds to this one, and this one corresponds to this one, or matching corresponding angles, must be congruent. In other words, the same degree measure. And I have already measured these. And do you trust me? Yes. yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> nice girls. Okay. This is a 60 degree angle and so is this one. I use the protractor to measure them. This was a 120 and a 120. This is another 120 degrees, 120 degrees. And this is a 60 degree and a 60 degree angle. Now the angles must be congruent in order for the shapes to be similar. But the sides obviously aren't going to be the same length. Their lengths have to be what we are going to call proportional. So I'm going to demonstrate that with you so you understand that better, okay? Okay. All right. Why don't we start with the large trapezoid, and I'm going to measure the length of its base. And I can see that its base is 8 inches long. So I'm going to write that down. And now I'm going to measure the base of the smaller trapezoid, and it's 2 inches long. So now I set up a ratio of the lengths of the two bases, okay? Okay. Now, in order to have a proportion, we need two ratios, and they have to be equal. So how about if I measure each side? Okay. okay. All right, now the larger trapezoid side is 4 inches long, and the small one, that's 1 inch long. So now I've set two ratios equal to each other, and that's a proportion. Mm -hmm. Now, but they have to be equal fractions in order for them to be proportional. Is 4 eighths equal to 1 half? Yes. yes. That's right. One's just like the simplified version of the other, right? Yes. So these two shapes, not only are they similar because they look like it, but we've proven it mathematically because we know that all their angles have the same measure. And we know that if we take a couple of the sides and we set up a ratio like the base to the base, the side to the side, we compare those fractions. If those fractions are equal to each other, then the shapes we have proven are mathematically similar, okay? Okay. 